In this video, I'm going to explain how dates work in Excel. In this text box here, I have a statement, dates are numbers formatted as dates. The number one is January 1st, 1900. The number two is January 2nd, 1900. So what does this mean? I'm going to click on cell A1. Notice it's of a general format right now. If you type a date and hit enter, Excel will recognize that you're typing a date and that general format automatically changes to a date. But what if I switch that back to general? Well, then it turns it into a number. What is that number? That number is the number of days since January 1st, 1900. That's the magical date. Every date in Excel is simply a number and it is the number of dates again, since January 1st, 1900. So as I mentioned here, if I were to simply type a two in a cell, right? So right now it's formatted as a general cell, but if I went over here and change it to a short date, it's January 2nd, 1900. So all dates are nothing more than a number formatted to display as a date. This is important to remember because occasionally I can never make this happen when I want it to happen. But let's say we have two dates and I simply want to subtract them to figure out the number of days between those two days. Occasionally you'll run into a situation where after you do the subtraction, you're like, okay, this should be uh, 14 days. But instead of seeing a 14, this will automatically format and you're getting 114 1900 and so that confuses students they're like what why am i getting 114 1900 it's because for some reason that cell happens to be formatted as a date you actually do have the number 14 as you'd expect it just got formatted wrong and so if you hit the general or the number format then you'll see what you're expecting to see but of course if you don't understand that dates and numbers are kind of the same thing, just two different formats that uh, you, you get confused by the fact that you're seeing a date when you're expecting a number. Now let's talk about some date functions. We're only gonna mention a few here, but if I run to the formula ribbon, there is a date category, and you can see a lot of different functions just for dealing with date. One of the more common functions that you'll put on a spreadsheet are is equal today or equal now. Then all they do, if you type equal today and open and close parentheses, this is one of the few functions that has no inputs, but you have to put the open and close parentheses in order to make it work. So you just type equal today and it puts today's date in that cell. The other function, which is very similar, is equal now. And open and close parentheses again. And when you hit enter, it puts in, obviously hashtag means I don't have enough space in the column, so I double click. It puts in the day and the time. So in this case, if I don't wanna see the time, well one, don't use the now function, use the today function, or I can just format it to a short date and it lops off the time piece of it. So again, if you want to use, see the date and time, well then you can just go to more number formats and you run down to one of the formats that includes the date and the time. Three other functions that are very handy to use are how do I get pieces of a date? So for instance, you may have a situation where you need to know what year it is. And so you have a column full of dates and you just want to pull out the year. Very often we'll use these in an if statement. If the year of these dates equals 2024 or whatever, then we'll do something different. So just to show you the function, what uh, you're seeing here is I use the year function. It's asking for a serial number. And again, you're like, why does that say serial number? Because a date is really just a number formatted as a date. So that's why you're seeing that as your input. But basically you choose your date and what it's gonna return is the year out of that date. Same thing, obviously, the rest are gonna look uh, very similar. Oh, I forgot the equal sign. If you type equal month and you click right there, again, it says serial number. Well, it's just asking for a date and you hit enter and it's gonna return, oh, I got a minus sign. It's gonna return the month out of that date and the same thing can happen today. 
So you'll hit parentheses, give it a serial number, and it's going to return the day out of that date. So if you ever need to return or look at just a piece of the entire date, those are the three functions that you would use. Now let's talk about Workday and Network Day. We'll go to another sheet where we have an example. So let's say I have customers placing orders and the goal of our company is to ship within three working days from the date of the order. All right. So there's a function called Workday, equal Workday, returns the serial number, there's that word again, of the date before or after a specified number of work days. So in this case, work days being Monday through Friday. So it says, well, what's your start date? Right there. And notice that's bold. And now I'm going to type a comma. And guess what goes bold? Days. How many days after that start date? And so we want three. And by the way, these are working days. Three working days after that date. And because I have square brackets, the holidays are optional. And for the most part in this class, we won't use it. You could just close this up. Just to let you know what those holidays are, is if your company observes special days for holidays or whatever, you can list those in a range of cells. And so then right here for holidays, you would select that range and say, this, this range is our holidays. So in this case, we're just going to go with the uh, standard holidays, put parentheses, and hit enter. Now here's a situation where you're like, wait a minute, I'm trying to figure out the days, the day that we're going to ship, that's three working days after that date. It did it, it's just not formatted as a date. So we run up here and go short date, and then it shows, and notice it's 3-8. If we were to think, well, 3, 3 plus 3 should be 3, 6. Well, obviously, this must be a Friday. Let's go to the long date. Oh, it's a Wednesday. Oh, boy. Double click. Okay, so that's Wednesday. And if we add three days, three working days to that, we'll go with a long date on that, too. Double click. And then we go, it's going to get shipped out on Monday in that case. So that's what the workday function does. Give me a date. How many working days after or before you put in a negative number and then it will return a date in that case. Now, there's another function called network days. So it's equal net network days returns the number of whole work days between two days. So if I uh, let's go hit the hit the tab key. I give it a uh, start date. I should probably give it the day it's actually shipped, comma. I want to know how many working days did it take to really ship our product. Then I give it the end date. I might have these reversed. I'm trying not to get a negative number. Again, the holidays is optional, and it would be a range of cells that contain your um, holidays. In this case, I'm not going to use it. Let's go ahead and hit enter. And I do have a negative number, so I have these reversed. So let's go ahead and do the start date of the order date. I'm going to hit delete. Notice the start date is bold. And now I'm going to hit comma, and then the end date goes bold. So now I can choose the 313. That's the day we actually shipped. And then the number I'm expecting to see is how many working days did it take to ship. And so in this case, it was eight working days. Just to make a point, let's go to network days and take our start date, comma, notice the end date's bold, the ship date. So what I'm expecting is three, because that was what we said. I want to ship within three working days, so I better see three here. Oops, I got four. So obviously network days is doing a little bit of different of an of accounting than work days. And that here we have Wednesday is day one, Thursday, Friday, so that's three. And then Monday is a four working days between those two dates. Whereas this must be not counting Wednesday, and then it'll go Thursday, Friday, and Monday is the third working day after March 3rd. If I want to copy these formulas down, don't forget that I would have to lock on, hit the F4 key on that uh, three days, and then I can double click and drag that down, double click to auto fit to make the column fit, and then just to get the networking days difference between the actual and the order date, I can now, I'm free to double click on that. 
Now let's go talk about time in Excel. Just like dates are a whole number, right? So day one, January 1st, 1900 is the number one. Time in Excel is a fraction of a day formatted as time. So 0.25 is a quarter of a day. Well, that when I format it as time is 6 a.m. Half a day, what time is a half of a day? 12 p.m. What time is three quarters of a day? 6 p.m. So right here I have, um, typo, um, fractions as decimal. So I, well, let's just go ahead and copy these over. I'll go ahead and copy them here. Watch this, there is another way to format these and that is as fraction. So then you'll recognize that 0.125 is an eighth, 0.25 is a quarter, 0.375 or 3, 0.375 is three eighths, all right? So now let's copy these one more time and I will format this as time. So a third or an eighth of a day is 3 a.m. A quarter of a day, as we've already talked about, six. Three eighths is nine, 12. So that's it. Time is simply a fraction of a day. When, a second ago, we used equal now, right? So I'll put in the open and close parentheses, hit enter, double click to auto fit. So right now is 1242. If, so it's almost a half of a day. So what I would expect is I'm gonna get a number point five and then some other decimals because it's almost half a day. So there it is. This is the number of days since January 1st, 1900. And then the 0.53 is the fraction of a day. And I can probably increase the decimals. So when I did that equal now function, that is the fraction of a day that represents the current time. So going back to number formats, I think if I go date and run down, there's just right there's the one that reflects the time. Anyway, so 1242 it was is that fraction of a 24-hour day. So now how can I use that? Let's say you're working at a call center of some sort and the call was placed at 8 o'clock. And to begin with, let's just talk about the fact that it was completed at 820. How many minutes was that call? So first of all, this is formatted as general. You can subtract time, right? So I just take that time minus this time, because what are you doing? You're just subtracting two fractions. Now, it immediately gives me 1220, and that's again like, what? Why is it giving me 1220? What I'm expecting, if anything, is what I want to see is the fact that this call was 20 minutes long, right? So 1220 means nothing. And this is one of those instances where Excel formats things, thinks it's doing you a favor, and in this case, it's not. You're like, oh, dang it, I don't, that's, I need a general format. And so that is, when I subtract this fraction of a day from that fraction of a day, it gives me this number. Well, that is the fraction of a day. If I want to see that in minutes, what I need to do is run up to the formula bar, or I could have done it down here, and how many hours are in a day? So the fact that there's 24 hours in a day, how many minutes are in an hour? Well, by the way, let's just stop there. I'm gonna hit 24 hours in a day. Again, it formatted it. Let's go back to general. So 20 minutes would be a third of an hour. And that's what it's showing us because we're taking that fraction of a day times 24 hours is giving me a third of an hour. So now again, I want to see this in minutes. And so I have to multiply by 60 minutes in an hour. Ugh, back to general. And so now that's giving me the 20 minutes that I can see that this call took. If I wanted to know how many seconds it was, so I'm going to take that fraction, 24 hours in a day, 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds in a minute. And so one more time, we gotta go back to general on that. So there's 1200 seconds in 20 minutes. Obviously right up here, I only want this in minutes so I can get rid of that last one. And one more time, this is gonna drive me crazy. Back to 20 minutes. How long did the people have to wait on hold? So obviously we can see the answer is five seconds, right? But um, 
I'm going to go ahead and format this as a number right now so we don't have to keep watching it switch. I'm going to take this minus that. And here is the number. Now, wait a minute. Why is it zero, zero? That's because we're not displaying enough decimals. So that is the fraction that represents the difference between that fraction and that fraction, right? If I were to make both of these be numeric and increase the decimals, see the difference? This is 0.33 and this is 0.3391. When you subtract them, here is the result. That's the piece of a day, right? The fraction of a day. I need to know how many seconds that is. Well, first I know there's 24 hours in a day. And then there's 60 minutes in an hour and there's 60 seconds in a minute. So that will give me the five seconds that we could see intuitively. We, we recognize that that was five seconds, right? Eight o'clock to eight o'clock or five. But that's what it takes when you're dealing with time. It's You need to recognize that time is just a fraction of a day. And then this table right here shows you how to convert between time and minutes or hours or seconds. And so that's it. In summary, recognize that Excel dates are simply numbers, number of days since January 1st, 1900, and they're formatted as dates. And you can flip back and forth between formatting them as dates and formatting them as numbers. And time is just a fraction of a number and it represents a fraction of a day. And again, you can flip between formatting it as a fraction or formatting it as time. And if you wanna see seconds or minutes, then you have to multiply by hours in a day, minutes in an hour, and, and uh, seconds in a minute.